Thanks, Lewis, for uh, taking the time to look at the i8 video. And now that we've taken some time to go on over to some of the performance features as well as its statistics, we're able to now compare it over to the BMW X6M. Now, the BMW X6M is, while it's also just as impressive as the vehicles, rather different. In fact, the BMW X6 originally started off as a vehicle designed to be about the mid to large size SUV, however, to be more genre in the genre of a crossover vehicle. So you may notice, it's still a very large vehicle, however, it has this nice sloping back roof line, so that it gives a more sporty activity coupe look to it. In fact, that is what BMW refers to it as, a sports activity coupe. Now, the BMW X6, now that we know what its roots are, the M, the last letter put, letter put at the end, changes quite a bit on the vehicle. And as you'll notice, not only under the hood, but actually all around the car aesthetically and performance-wise, it's definitely been upgraded. It's a re-engineered car. We can start off even right here on the wheels. The wheels now, standard, are 21-inch wheels. Because of these large 410 millimeter rotors up front and the six piston brakes, it's gonna need a large wheel to, in order to clear all of that braking. And that contributes to its very short stopping distance from 60 miles an hour to zero in about 115 feet or so. Very impressive for a car that weighs about 5,100 pounds. Now, some other things you'll notice here on the car is in fact, under the hood, you can take a look and notice that it's not your average six cylinder, even your eight cylinder. In fact, it is a hand built twin turbo 4.4 liter V8. In fact, this particular one develops about 567 horsepower and about 556 foot-pounds of torque. Now, although this engine may have a lot of similarities to the ones shown in the BMW M5 and M6, there is one extremely large difference between this M out of any others in the BMW fleet, and it is one feature called X-Drive. X-Drive is BMW's all-wheel drive system and is currently the only M car Currently, the have the X5 or the X6M has both the X-Drive systems in it. That helps with its 5,100 pound curb weight to be able to launch itself zero to 60 in as little as about 3.8 seconds. So, when we take a look back over at the i8 over here, we're also looking at a car that's about 2,000 pounds lightweight, more lightweight than the X6M. Yet, the X6M is still able to achieve a zero to 60 performance figure of very, very similar times. Now the quarter mile time as well, this vehicle is coming in at about 12.1 and trapping in at about 114 miles per hour, 114.8, very similar times. Now, with the all-wheel drive system, it's also able to change where it vectors its torque. So, should you be driving in snow, you'd be driving down the road and you turn the wheel and you notice it just to plow through the turn, it can take all that power, take it from the front wheels, send it to the rear, whichever wheels that need the traction most. Of course, finally, one of the things about the BMW X6M is a lot of even its technologies behind it. In fact, in the X6M, you'll also notice a carbon fiber interior, polished carbon fiber. So, not only will it preserve its effect for a while, but it also looks beautiful, especially when wet, sh wet sanded and shined and taking the time to put really the top detail into it. As well, there are small details such as the M, the M steering wheel involving the M embroidery all the way around it, allowing for an authentic BMW M car. Every single one of them has always had it ever since the original M5, 1986. Also in this vehicle, you'll notice it has particular seats to it. These are exclusive to the X5 and X6M only and they offer a heavy bolstering on the sides so that you can stay positioned in your seat upright while going through high speed turns without rocking. And of course, with it being adjusted 20 ways, you can adjust anything from lower leg support to even have the seat bend in half to form more around your shoulders should you so choose to. Now, on this particular BMW X6M, they also have the M adaptive suspension, meaning this vehicle, of course, is born, bred, and engineered to be a race car. However, it shouldn't have to be a commitment to that every day. So, it's able to accomplish the everyday task comfortably as well. And that M adaptive suspension being one of the major components. So, 
what they're able to do is design a suspension where you can adjust it, say maybe you're taking the kids to school, you can be able to do so in a nice orderly manner, but then say you want to get them out, get them on out, take them into school, soccer practice, and you decide, hey, I need to go, sit back on over to the office here real quick, running late for something, and you'll never run into anything late again. Push the button, you're already a sports car, right a button away. So you're able to take these interchangeable features and set presets to what you might find to be your favorite settings. So this car is essentially being more personalized to your taste and to your attitude, depending on the situation. All changed at any time you'd like. Now, when it comes to myself as a BMW product expert on these two products, the BMW i8 and the X6, my final thoughts between the two vehicles. Both are impressive and incredibly performing vehicles for what they are. However, the one thing that must be realized is they are two very different vehicles in many different ways. Whereas the X6M is a full-blown engineered race car with a dedicated engine and all, it is still rather practical. For example, you notice we can see four very comfortably as well as a very practical trunk. And while it is fun to be able to get a lot of the broken necks that you see with such an exotic car, these are some things that are sacrificed that the BMW i8 will not be able to offer. Now the BMW i8 on the other hand, of course it has what I call the timeless body, meaning I could be two, it could be 2040 if you ask me, and I could probably never say that this looks like an old or a primitive car. Like I said, it is timeless. However, so you, you may notice things like it can seat four. However, practically, I think not. You do have two small seats in the back, but I would say they probably resemble most like the back seats in a Porsche 911. Are they there? Yes. Are they practical? I think not. Also on this particular car, the trunk space is actually loaded back here. In fact, although I'm not able to get the glass up, the best representation would be from this point to about this point right here is going to be your width, or your length I should say, of your cargo space, and about that wide. I would say you'd maybe be able to fit a backpack back there, maybe two at most, but as you can see it is definitely the less practical car. Also, then another thing to continue to definitely just talk about between the two cars and performance wise is this vehicle it has a lot less power, however it has a lot less weight. So it's able to go a lot faster for a lot less of not only the power in the car, but a lot less of the longevity where you don't have to worry about the car being worked nearly as hard. A high performance engine that needs a lot more power to push a lot more weight is going to definitely work harder. However. This vehicle I would definitely find to probably be its quickest from light to light as opposed to maybe a highway cruise from maybe 70 miles an hour to 100. And here's why. With the electric assist, electricity has its most power when it's at a dead stop. Almost like turning on a light switch as you may have seen maybe with the Tesla reaction videos. They're blisteringly quick off the line. However, the faster you go, it's like with electricity, the less and less power it starts to have. So sure enough, I would say maybe at about 60 miles an hour or so, you're going to be almost fully reliant upon the three-cylinder turbocharged engine in the rear. And I would say, you'll have great running legs from about zero to 70 or 80, but it's going to definitely lose its lungs there. And that, I would say, is where the X6M, with its 567 horsepower, it has a lot more oomph to be able to push that and have it push the momentum a lot faster. So, are they those very impressive cars? For sure. However, I would say this car is definitely going to shine most off the line. Or this is going to have a lot longer legs and be able to push its weight a lot better at a high speed. But of course, they're both in fantastic cars. And Lewis, should you have any more questions on any of them in particular, by all means let myself know, or Marie in the BDC department, we're both happy to help in any way we can. Look forward to working with you soon, and have a wonderful day, Lewis.